I want to talk to you for a few minutes today about the ultimate relationship. In the book of Genesis, we see the creation of everything, including the creation of man. And I'm going to read several scriptures, but we're going to read a verse today from Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 27. Genesis 1, 27 says, So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. In the image of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, in his image. He created us in his image. Praise the Lord. Lord, bless your word to our hearts today. Let it not return void. Let it fall on fertile soil, and let it accomplish that with it that which it was sent to do in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Now, I want to talk to you for a few minutes today about the ultimate relationship. And I'm here to tell you it's time to take it back. Take it back. Turn to your neighbor and say, take it back. It's time to take back what the devil has stolen. For some of us, he's stolen a lot of time. And for us, time is a definitive thing. It has a beginning and an end. Our time span can be measured on a line. But to God, there is no time. He created it. The devil may like you to think that you can't get back what's been stolen. That you can't take back. That you can't resume where you left off. That you have to start all over. The devil would like to make you think that you can't accomplish whatever you dreamed of, whatever vision God gave you when you were young. The devil would like to make you think that you don't have any power. But I'm here to tell you it's time to take it back. Now, from the very beginning, in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, chapters 1 and 2, we see what can be described as perfection. Perfection. The first two chapters of Genesis are creation. There's no flaw. God creates, and there is. Period. These are the only two, what I would say, are perfect chapters in the Bible. Because in Genesis 3, sin enters the picture. And the rest of the Bible, if you will, is trying to get us back to a Genesis 1 and 2 relationship with God. It is a reset, if you will, a reprogram. What am I talking about? Repent. Get renewed. Restore. The rest of the Bible is trying to get us back into what God created for us to have in Genesis 1 and 2. That type of ultimate relationship with God. Now, to understand what, when we talk about creation and man... It's very important to understand the significance of how we, what we are made up of. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, Paul says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, entirely. May the God of peace sanctify you wholly or entirely, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're made up of three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. What is the spirit? That is the life, the breath of life, the pneuma, if you will. The soul is the psyche, the will, our mind, our heart, our thoughts. And then, of course, the body is the humus or the soma, the, the, where the word human comes from. And if you look at Genesis chapter 1 and the creation of the spirit part of man... We can understand better just exactly what this ultimate relationship that God created us to have actually means. So in Genesis 1 and 3, God says, let there be light. He speaks to nothing and creates something. Let there be light and there was light. And we see throughout the creation, Him speaking and suddenly things become. He speaks to nothing and calls something out of nothing. And when the Bible says, said let there be light, that actually means create. 
And I'm here to tell you, there's only one creator. Only God can truly create. Men like to think that they can create things. And we think, well, we can create a painting or a piece of art or a, a building or this. But technically, that's not true creation because we're manipulating things that are already there. We're manipulating matter that already exists. Only God can speak to nothing and create something. He's the only one that can call out things when there is absolutely nothing there. He's the only one who can say, let there be, and there is. But as we look at creation in the first several verses of, of chapter 1 of Genesis, we see him calling out something from nothing. And then in, in, in verse 11, God actually changes the way that he, start, he creates, the way he's doing things. Genesis 1 and 11 says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is, in it, seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. He speaks to the earth and calls something from the earth. Why did he change the way he was creating? Why did he use different words like Barak and Ahmad? Why did he change the way he was creating? Because at first he spoke to nothing and created something, but now he's speaking to something and calling something out. Did he not have enough power to say, let there be grass? Did he not have enough power to say, let there be trees? But he changed the way he was talking. He said, let the earth bring forth grass. What he was doing was building capacity in the earth to produce. He was building ability in what was there to produce something new. I would say that perhaps he changed his words and his tactic as described in the first several verses of Genesis into 11 and beyond to fashion things for relationship so that the trees would be connected to the earth to have life, so that they would be forever connected and that the properties of life would be connected, that their potential to grow would be connected, so that their very life force would be connected. You can tell if something has good soil by how much fruit it bears, by how it looks. If it's not good soil, if there's toxins or chemicals or something in the soil, if anything grows, it's not going to look the same. It's going to look diseased. And you even could even, they can run tests and say, well, we detected this toxin or this chemical in the their soil. So if you want something to grow well, you got to fertilize it. I had uh, an experience with my grass this year. I, I'll confess, this has been an embarrassing moment, an embarrassing year for me, because I like the grass to look nice. And so I thought this year, you know, I'm going to have the best yard in the neighborhood. And I bought a, some fertilizer, and I didn't read what it was. It just said fertilizer. I, I don't care what's in it. I'm gonna, it's green. I'm going to make it even more green. So I spread this stuff. I mean, I bought three bags. I just, I just laid this stuff out. And about two weeks later, my whole yard was dead. I was humiliated. I went through... Savannah, I don't know how much time, uh, two or three months of, of just trying to get something to grow. I put new seed out. It wouldn't grow. I, I tried to, oh, well, let's aerate the lawn and let's, you know, make it so where there's, there's fresh dirt. I pull, pulled in new dirt. I, had, I got a tiller and wore myself out tilling up the whole yard <laughs> to plant new seed. And what I put down was too, <laughs> was too much. Um, it, it was this high nitrogen, whatever. Someone explained it to me, a grass expert, and I said, well, from now on, I'll just let the Lord produce because I, <laughs> I, I can't do it right. So uh, I ended up even at one point putting straw all in the backyard just so I wouldn't have a mud pit that the dogs could go outside on. But, um, but you can tell what, what kind of soil something has by how good it looks. The Bible talks about a tree planted by the rivers of water. Why? The rivers of life, the rivers of water nourish. They provide capacity for something to grow. So if we look beyond in the next several verses of creation, he, 
God speaks to the waters and says, let the waters bring forth the fish. Their very life, their very potential is connected. And many of you have probably had fish before. And you know, if you get a goldfish, put it in a little bowl or a tank, it's never going to outgrow the tank. But if you put that same fish in a big lake, you'll be surprised at how big it can get. Why? Because its source carries the potential. The source properties show up in the actual life that is connected to it. So you skip down through Genesis to chapter 26. I mean, excuse me, verse 26 of chapter 1. This is the creation of man. Here God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, what, what, what is God? Is he black? Is he white? Is he yellow? Is he young? Is he old? Is he male? Is he female? Is he 40? Is he 70? What is God? Well, John said that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God, being the only one true supreme being, having dominion over everything, creating everything from nothing, he says, let us make man in our image. Now this is not, this is still one God. He's still all one. This is the royal pronoun. Let us. We are not amused. This is still one God. So God said, let us make man in our likeness and give him dominion over all things. So verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, God's attributes before any of the creation. God is holy. God is pure. God is mighty. God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God is eternal. God is everlasting. We can think of all the things that God is, but there's only one thing that God could not be by himself. Only one thing, and that is love. Because love alone is self-love. And self-love is selfish. And by definition, self-love is not love. Because love is giving. Love is sacrifice. So God, being all supreme, being everything, creating everything, total dominion and power, all one. And if you put all one together, what do you get? Alone. So God creates the sun, the moon, and the stars, and he looks up at all of his creation and he says, what can I give my love to? I created the angels. I created the galaxies. But I can't really pour my love on any of them because they're not really like me. So God creates man in his image. He said, let us. He spoke to himself and said, Let us make man in our image. Just like he told the earth, let the earth bring forth grass. He spoke to himself and said, let us make man in our image and have dominion. He gave you and I dominion. He gave us dominion, the Bible says, over the earth, over the plants, over the animals, over the fish, over the birds. He said, I'm going to give him dominion so that he can be like me. Just so I can love him. So God gives man dominion, and dominion is born in us. You don't have to learn dominion. You don't have to teach a baby dominion. They know it on their own. I've never heard of a baby that, or a parent that just complained of their child saying, Oh, help me, I don't know what to do. My child is so selfless, they give away all their toys. I've, I've never heard that. I don't have children yet. But, I don't have children, but I've never seen a child that didn't know how to have dominion. 
And Jesus didn't say there was anything wrong with dominion. He just said, you don't know what you're asking for with dominion. So, what are you saying, brother? It's not natural for us to want to submit. Dominion is born in us. There's a natural drive that makes me want to have my way, my will. God gave me will. So, through dominion, we have perverted what God intended it to be. He never said... I'm going to give you dominion over other men. If you'll read the list of all the things he gave dominion of, men was not one of them. We were supposed to have dominion over the earth and everything in it. We're not supposed to let the earth have dominion over us. We're not supposed to be bound by things in this earth. We were not created to be dominated by anything or anyone on this earth. There's only one person who has all true Supreme dominion, and that is God Himself. Only God has true dominion and true power that is everlasting. He has the ultimate authority. But in our dominion, there's this natural drive that made Adam and Eve try to undermine God's authority. And this attempt to usurp His authority led Adam and Eve to sin and shame. So, the dominion that we have been given has to be still under the submission to the dominion of God. So our dominion, our will, didn't truly get broken until Jesus himself came on this earth and experienced all the pain, all the temptations, all the sufferings, and more than you and I, but all things that men experience. When he came to this earth, and he knew that he was going to suffer beyond imagine. Dominion didn't truly get conquered until he said, nevertheless, not my will. Nevertheless, not what I want. Nevertheless, not what my flesh wants. I don't want to go through this, Jesus. I don't want to go through this, God. I don't want to go through this trial. I don't want to fast. I don't want to pray. I don't want to hurt. I don't want to experience pain. I don't want to go through anything. Huh? Huh? Nevertheless, if you want to do anything for the kingdom, if you want to experience the dominion that God created you to have, you have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I have to be willing to humble myself and bow down before the King of kings and the Lord of lords and acknowledge that only He is God. There's no man on earth that's God. There's no idol on earth that we are to bow down to. Not money, not power, not a job, not an addiction, not plants, not other people. Only God. I bow down only to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And if I acknowledge His supreme dominion, His power, and if I humble myself before the hand of God, if you'll humble yourself before God and break your will, you can take back the dominion that He created you to have. If He can tell the earth, bring forth the plants. If He can tell the water, bring forth the fish. What can He do through you, who He created in His image to have dominion? What can He do through someone, through a child of His, that has dominion over the earth, who finally realizes, I don't have to fear Satan anymore. I don't have to be bound by chains and sin anymore. I don't have to fear what's going on in the world. I can stand up boldly and say, you know what? I'm a child of the King. What can man do to me? No one can harm me. I'm in the hand of God. What can sickness do to me? What can peril or sword or famine? What can man do to me? I have dominion over this earth. I'm not going to be bound anymore. Stay with me. So God pulls out of himself a spirit being. Attributes of God like him. That, that's why when God breathed into man the breath of life, he put spirit into us. He made this clay vessel, this house. He built this house out of clay. 
And then he breathed into it the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Spirit, soul, and body. The breath of life is the source. God is your source. I don't know how far you may have fallen. I don't know where you've come from. I don't know what walk you've come from. I don't know where your children are, where your family members are. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm telling you, if you'll acknowledge Him as your source, watch what He does through the circumstances in your life. If you'll acknowledge that the Spirit of God is what I need to tap into. If you'll acknowledge that He has true dominion and power, I can promise you, there's nothing that you won't be able to face or go through. There's no demon in hell that can stop you. If you stay full of prayer, if you stay full of fasting, if you stay full of the Spirit of God, you say, well, I haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost. I haven't spoken in other tongues. Today's your day. Well, I haven't had it in a while. Today's your day. Well, I got it yesterday. Today's your day. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Not next year. Today is the day of God's people to rise up and take back the dominion that He intended us to have. To take back our families. To take back our souls. To take back our minds. To take back our peace and our joy. Today is your day to take it back. It's not natural for us to have a word of faith. It's not natural for us to believe that anything is possible. That's not natural. It's not natural for us to come into the house of God and feel like praising. It's not natural to want to fast. But when I come into the house like we did today and the Spirit begins to move and I start to feel that connection, that Spirit, that breath of life once again, and then I raise up my hands and I look up and I acknowledge, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you to fill me again. Lord, I need you to breathe into me again. I'm telling you right now. David said it like this. When I consider the, the sun, the moon, and the stars, what is man that you are so mindful of him? When you look at God and all he's done, when you look at God and all he's created, who are you and I? And yet, he created you to be like him. To have dominion just so He can love you. Just because He wanted to love you, He gave you dominion like Him. What is man? Who am I that your mind is so full of man? There's nothing else that God can love. That's why when the rapture takes place, the angels have to step aside and say, here comes the bride. Here comes Him who God loves. Here comes the church. Aren't you glad you're a part of the church? The angels don't even get what you and I get. You and I are like Him. You and I are the bride of Christ. Paul said if you could only perceive the love of God, the breadth, the height, the depth, if you could only tap into that. Oh, God. And that's why even in, in Genesis when God creates woman, what does He look to to create? He doesn't go back to the dirt. He goes to man and said, I'm going to take a piece of you because it's not good for you to be alone. Read the read the scripture. You need a help meet. It's not good for you to feel alone, but you won't be able to actually relate to her unless she's a part of you. That's why he didn't go back to the dirt. He took a rib so that Adam could become the source. Adam said, what bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, something this is that that I can give my love to. This is a receiver that I can pour my love on that can in turn return my love. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, let no man say he hath loved God, for God hath loved him. Before you and I were a thought, before you and I were ever born, God loved us. When sin was all that we were born into, he loved us and died for us. He loved us first. It's only fitting that someone He gave dominion to should love Him back. It's only fitting that we should come into the house of God and not waste another Sunday service of just routine. Not waste another service of just, well, that was a good one. I can't, you know, can't wait to get out of here. We've all got circumstances in life that we're going through. We've all got jobs and, and worries and things on our mind. But this is the place that we can tap into our source. This is the place that we can increase our potential. 
This is the place that we actually can sink our roots in, put our antennas up and receive from the Almighty. This is the place that we actually can become filled with power and dominion. Stay with me. It doesn't matter what religion or culture you look at. Everything, everyone, sci-fi, Mother Nature, the Great Spirit, whatever. Everything, every person on earth has a spirit that is longing to be reconnected with spirit. It longs to be back in touch with God, with, with its creator. There's something inside of us that longs to get back into connection with the spirit that created us. It's like a fish without water. We long for it. We sometimes we don't even know what we need. We don't even know what we're missing. But that's when you get the Holy Ghost for the first time and you say, I, don't, I can't describe it. I don't even know what I'm feeling. It's like I'm brand new. It's like I'm born again. Why does the Bible say born again? Because you have new life. When he breathes into you for the first time, when you repent and you say, God, forgive me of my sins, I plead the blood of Jesus, and he breathes into you that breath of life, and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with, speak, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, that's when you, for the first time ever, realize what life actually is. And until you have it, you don't know what it is. There's a constant fight between the spirit and the body, the body, the flesh. The Bible says all that's in the world is the lust of, fle lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. There's a constant struggle. The flesh is always pulling us to try to not reconnect with the spirit. The spirit's always trying to say, tap into your source. What's the fight over? The fight is over our souls. So what are you going to allow to control you today, November 22nd, 2020? Are you going to continue to allow circumstances to dictate your mind? Are you going to continue to look at your past and say, I can't because my mom dropped me on my head? Actually, the truth, she did. <laughs> Am I going to let that control my life? Is that what's going to control my thoughts? Are my mistakes in my past going to dictate my future? Or is something spiritual going to get a hold of me? It's not what the body says, it's what the spirit says. That's why it says by the love of God is how we're known as his disciples. Sometimes we need to look at ourselves and realize who we really are. We're not victims on this earth. We give the devil too much credit. I know he's the prince and power of the air, but we have the Holy Ghost living inside of us, folks. We have all power and dominion. We were created in the very image of God. Sometimes we need to look in the mirror and say, God loves me. He loves me. He died for me. There's nothing else that he can love but me. How is this possible? Because Jesus died. Because he shed his blood. Greater love hath no man than that he layeth down his life for his friends. For God so loved the world that he gave his life. That's hard for me to understand. But God's Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is poured out because he gave love. It's for you and I to receive. If you don't receive it, it's not because he doesn't want to give it. It's not because he hasn't done everything to give it. See, there's this process of giving and receiving. That's what the holiday season is all about. That's what Christmas is all about. Giving. God gave so that you and I could live again. He's been here in this service since we, since we showed up. Since his people gathered together, he's been here. And he wants to, I'm, I said it before, he wants to do the miraculous in this place. He doesn't want you to leave the same way that you came. He doesn't want you to leave with depression and anxiety and torment. He doesn't want you to leave with sickness in your body. You say, well, what if I don't get my healing? What if I don't get my, what, what, what if I still have to take my medicine tomorrow? I'm still going to have faith. You know why? Because that doesn't dominate me. That doesn't control me. My sickness in my body doesn't define me. The devil does not define me. It's time for the people of God to take back what we allowed to be taken from us. It's time for us to take with authority. 
the dominion that God gave us. Dominion over Satan. Dominion over the prince of the power of the air. It's time for us to praise God. It's time for us to lift up holy hands and receive that what he really wants to give us. The Bible says that miracle signs and wonders will follow them that believe. Is there anyone who has an increased measure of faith today that's willing to believe God for the impossible? That's willing to believe God for the same prayer that you prayed for the last 20 years? Is there anyone who's willing to believe that, you know what? I've prayed it. I'm going to keep praying it. God is still in control. He's still in command. He still has all power. He still has all authority. And this world is not going to get any more of my mind. Satan's not going to get any more of my mind. I'm taking back dominion. I'm standing up in the face of the devil who's not a lion. He just goes around like a roaring lion. There's only one lion of the tribe of Judah. You and I have a fierceness in us that has been suppressed by fear. It's time for us to drop that. The Bible didn't give us that. He gave us what? Power and love and a sound mind. He gave you dominion and love. Dominion just so that he could love you. God is timeless. God is omnipotent. God is eternal. He's omniscient. The Bible says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to pray to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given to us in the one he loves. God's eternal. God is unstoppable. They said it today. He's the God of the breakthrough. He's the God who brings down strongholds. Is there anyone who has a stronghold today? Is there anyone who has an addiction that they would like to overcome today? Today is the day that that stronghold can come down. Today is the day that you can take back dominion over your life. Today is the day that you can claim your family again. Today is the day that you can say, you know what, devil, I've had enough. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not allowing you to torment me anymore. I'm not allowing you because guess what? The devil is under our feet. The Bible says that he may have bruised your heel, but you will bruise his head. God has given us that power. It's time for someone to stomp on the devil and say, you know what? I am claiming territory. I'm walking and treading on serpents. I'm claiming territory like Abraham did. Places that I didn't even know I could go. Everywhere I walk, I'm claiming new territory in Greensboro. I'm claiming new territory in North Carolina. I'm claiming new territory in the United States. I'm claiming dominion over sickness. I'm claiming dominion over every spirit. I'm claiming dominion because I have it. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But guess what? In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who what? Loved us. You're more than a conqueror. I don't even know what that is. When I think of conqueror, I think of someone who isn't beaten, who isn't defeated. You're more than that. Stop being defeated by Satan. Stop allowing him to control your mind. Neither depth, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor present, nor future, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You have dominion. Turn to your neighbor and say, take it back. Don't let the devil make you think that your circumstances, that the trouble that you're going through right now has control over you. The Bible says in a command form, what? Submit yourselves to God. Break that will. Break that will, submit to him and resist the devil and he'll flee. He has to flee. Resist him. In apostolic church services, we have receiver meetings. That's what we do. We have opportunities to reconnect with God. Today, today, where you're sitting, 
you can reconnect with God. If you haven't already, you can. And he wants you to. You just got to put your antennas up and tune in to the right satellite. If you'll put your head, what does the Bible say? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We've done that. He inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits where you are. Lord, don't pass us by. That's why, though, some people can sit in the same chair, the same pew for years and years and years and never get a touch. But someone else can be sitting right next to him and get it every time. Today is the day that we need to renew our connection with God. After he made Adam, he put him in the garden to keep it, to dress it, to walk in the cool of the day. Eden means pleasure. And the entomology of the word actually means the place where God's very presence touched. The problems in the world are spiritual. We need to stop trying to conquer them with physical weapons. We need to stop trying to control them with things on this earth. It is the God of heaven. It is the creator, the spirit being that you need. I don't care where you live. You can, that's, you can be in the best place in the world. You can live in the best house in the world. You can have the best spouse in the world. You can have all that. But there's never fulfillment until you get in God's presence. Amen. There's never fulfillment the Bible says what? In thy presence there is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. The devil's job is to make us resent. Wish I had this. Wish I had this. I'm not content with this. I'm not satisfied with this. I wish I had a better job. I wish I had more money. I wish I lived up the street. But God created us to live in Eden. And Eden means pleasure. Amen. That's where the presence of God is. That's why today, if you want it, you can experience pleasure forevermore. At your right hand are pleasures. There's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's what I'm feeling. I'd rather be here than anywhere else. I'd rather be in the presence of God than anywhere. If we'll just tune in, if you'll just allow God, as we close this service, if you'll just allow Him to touch you, if you'll just look up to Him, allow Him to breathe into you. We've already felt his presence. We've already praised and worshiped. The Bible says that we were created to have dominion. Lord, let us feel your presence one more time. Let us feel your love one more time. Lord, give us your love one more time. Lord, let us feel your love one more time. Lord, I want to feel your, your peace and your joy one more time. Lord, let me experience your presence one more time, Jesus. Lord, if you come tomorrow, I want to go out feeling your presence. I want to go out, Lord, feeling the presence of God in Eden. I want to be a receiver of your love, God. I want to receive it, God, and then give it. I want to praise you. I want to worship you. Is there anyone who's ready to take back the dominion is there anyone who's ready to take it back right now, today? There's only one thing you got to do. Receive. He's given. All you got to do is receive. The power of the Lord is here. His Spirit is here. The God of all creation, the Creator is here. You can have your dominion back today. You can have your power back today. You can have your healing today. You can have your deliverance today. Your loved one could be delivered this very day. You could have your peace today, your joy today. You could have that job promotion today. The Lord doesn't want you to suffer in this world. The devil's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. Pastor talked last week about endless love. It is endless. It is endless. We need to revive the love of God in us. We need to receive it one more time. We need to feel the Spirit of God in us one more time. And let us be empowered by it. Let's stand together right now. Are there any receivers out there? Is there anyone out there who's ready to say, today is the day that everything changed. Today is the day that I'm never going back. Today is the day that I am going out 
everywhere I go, they're going to say, that's a child of God. People that don't even know how to describe it are going to say there's something about them. Today is the day that I'm going to get my power back so I can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Today is the day that I rebuke the enemy. Today is the day that I tread on his head. Today, I'm not going back anymore. I'm taking back my dominion. God created you to have dominion. It's time. It's time. If there's anyone, there's anyone in this house who has a specific need, who has a physical healing need, who has a spiritual need, who has an emotional need, if there's anyone who has a loved one that you've been praying for, if there's anyone who has a deep heart's desire that you've been longing for, today is the day for you to receive from the Almighty. Today is the day for you to claim that territory. Stop being satisfied with doubt and fear and torment from the enemy. He doesn't have power over you. He may have power over the air, but I have dominion over all the earth. You have dominion over all the earth. Any needs that were mentioned, I want you to come forward. We're going to pray for you. There is power. There is healing. There is salvation. There is grace. You say, well, I've, I've done too much. There's blood for that. You say, well, this sin is too much. There's blood for that. And you say, well, I don't, I, I don't, I mean, God can't heal this. There's blood for that too. By his stripes, you're healed. There's power in the blood. Someone needs to come up to the front and plead the blood of Jesus over their body. Someone needs to come up to the front and plead the blood of Jesus over their loved one. Anyone who has a need, I want you to come forward right now. The power of God is here. Your dominion lies in humbling yourself 